Hello and welcome back to the best jet ski repair channel on the internet. This is a Kawasaki 440 jet ski motor. Probably from the mid 80s, I have no idea. I'm no expert. Um, it was given to me by my buddy Dave. No, obviously that's not his real name. But, it's just been sitting around for years. Here is a reenactment of the conversation and how I got this thing. Hello. Brendan, it's Dave. Oh, hello, good friend. How are you this fine day? <laughs> good, thanks for asking. Hey, this place I'm working off offered me this jet ski engine. I thought of you. Do you want it? Well, a random jet ski engine isn't currently on my list of needs. Well, it's pretty nice. You might like it. Well, what kind is it? I don't know. Well, Dave, I mean, I'm grateful. It's already in my car, so I'm bringing it over. I'm pretty sure you'll want it. <laughs> and that was five, six, seven years ago, so it's it's been quite a while. Uh, it's just been sitting on my shelf. When I first saw it, I was like, well, I mean, yeah, if my jet ski ever dies, I need a motor for it. Might as well hang on to it. It doesn't take up that much room. But I then realized, after looking at it on the front here, it says 440. I have a 550. Yeah, it's a little smaller. But then as the time went on with my last jet ski and I started learning about performance parts, performance jet ski solutions, PJS solutions uh, manifold. So, I mean, you get the manifold, the pipe, chamber, I don't know what you call this thing. So it's got a full PJS, yeah, PJS exhust on it. Has a K&N air filter. The other thing you notice about it is this coupler back here. I know you can't see it on your angle, it's not a big deal, but it doesn't have any pipe wrench marks on it. So it's never really been a part. And if it has been, it's by somebody who knows what they're doing. All in all, it looks like a great motor. It really does. It's all intact. It's just, it looks like it was just pulled out. So I, I know nothing about it, really, other than it's been sitting around forever. So now I'm, I'm going to go slap it into a hull. I mean, might as well see what this thing can do. Okay, this is the hull I picked up for this project. It is an 85, I believe, 440. Just uh, pretty, pretty standard stuff. A uh, little bit of glue from, I don't know, I'm guessing... A mat or something was there. Missing the cap, which is normal, but we're also missing slash it's broken the little tabs that would mount the cap in, so we'll have to figure something else out for that. I really like it just because of its color scheme, really. I mean it's it's all original. Nobody's nobody's painted slash screwed it up. It's just and it just screams 80s, you know, it's great. I really like it. Now I was scrolling through the uh, marketplace one day and I saw this just mint 85 550 and the guy wanted like $5,500 for it. And I was like, well, it's, I'm not buying that. But then I read the ad just to see what it says. And at the bottom it also says, I also have an 85 440 for free if anybody wants it. Now the ad was a month old. I was like, well, it's a shot in the dark, but I, I contacted him. I was like, hey, is the 440 still available? Yeah, absolutely. You want it? Come get it. Drove over there the next morning and picked this bad boy up and it was titled in his name so there was no issue there either i think people were just scrolling through saw the price said ooh, too much kept scrolling never bothered to read the ad because free is a very good price for one of these things now i don't know much about these stand-up jet skis other than i like them i've had a few over the years and i'm starting now to get familiar mechanically with them so that's i guess apparently how you're supposed to do this I've never, never seen it except for once a few days ago. That, that makes sense. That, that works. But anywho, looks like we have a stock 440 engine. Uh, discoloration in the cylinder head. I don't know if that matters, but if this was an Evinrude, I'd say it overheated and uh, scored some cylinders. I checked spark and compression. Compression, I think, was about 150. Spark was no issue. Fuel lines. No idea what's going on there. They're going everywhere. Uh, we have a primer system instead of the choke. So the chokes are removed. Primer was installed. It's not not bad, but the fuel system, it's everywhere. Had a West Coast unvented early gas tank in it. Uh, it leaked, <clears throat> sent gas over everything. Gas evaporated. Now everything down there is just covered in oil. So it needs to get just cleaned up a bit. I don't know if this is a factory nozzle or not. It doesn't really look like it, but it looks like we got a beefy nozzle. Probably have some kind of intake grate mod on there. I don't know, might have some mods, not sure. 
All right, let's get this engine out of here. Start with the uh, exhaust, I suppose. Go over the electronics and the fuel and the cooling. Should take less than an hour. So, since I'm recording it, you can tell me exactly how long it takes. All right, that took less than 12 minutes, so not bad. I have a little bit of uh, simple purple here. And then we'll use it to clean up the hole here. Yeah, that's probably good. Now I've got some hot-ish clean water. That's the warm. <clears throat> Soak for a bit. That'll help me clean this up. Tell me if anything, well, if the hole's leaking anywhere. And not being too disgusting to work on. And luckily, being a boat, it keeps water out just as well as it keeps water in. So, soak in, uh, be back in an hour or so. Alright, I have this. Uh, Aqua water pump. Used it for a couple of things thus far. This looks like a good job for it. This is a clean water pump. However, it has this little filter screen base and a little point so it can't pick up more than the last eighth inch. So it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like this water is muddy and disgusting. It's just water with zip bag remnants and. A little bit of oil contamination. Nothing I'm necessarily worried about. It is a 12 volt pump. They also have the 110 volt option. I got the 12. Also, I got a little battery sitting here. Now there's not that much water in here, probably to necessarily justify a pump. But you have a pump. Oops. You have a pump, might as well use it in there, right? Now, for those eco-friendly people out there, you should know that I am not just hooking this up to a garden hose and dumping it out onto the uh, dirt outside. I'm actually running into a bucket. From that bucket, it'll go into a co coalescer. After the coalescer, it'll go into a superator. From the superator, I then got a couple of oil skimmers that'll skim any remnants left off. I'll then superheat the water to evaporate it, and any oil will go into a recycling facility down the street. I'm very set up. So, I've already scrubbed the base a little bit. I'll do a little more and then I'll start pumping this stuff out of here. No leaks on the garage floor other than from my garden hose. So, all is I guess on this. Yeah, probably watertight. All right, now it is time to work on the yield motor. Uh, it probably doesn't need much. It probably, you know, I probably put gas in it. Probably runs fine to be honest. But might as well clean the little carburetor. It's been has been done in decades. The other problem with these things is the seals on the crankcase can go bad, leading to its inability to pump and suck fuel. Some. The internet's mixed on this one. Some people, every problem in the world is a bad crankcase seal. Other people, those things last forever. It's never an issue. So, you, yeah, I don't know where you want to go with it. But 
It probably needs to get changed. Might as well. Uh, I've never actually done the crank seal on my last jet ski that I had rebuilt. The top end, they did the bottom end for me, so I didn't have to do any of this. So this is going to be a learning experience. But I didn't go through the rest of the thing, and I know the, I know the gist of it. I have purchased a tool for this coupler. Should fit right on in there. Just like so. Yeah, well, that was a piece of cake, huh? So, a lot of people say it's not really worth it. Use a hammer, wrench, pipe, make one. Yeah, I mean, that. look at that. That was a piece of cake to get that thing off. People struggle with that. I, I'm happy with that tool. I don't really want this pipe flopping around on me when I'm trying to work on the bottom of this motor, so I'm gonna, I think I can take off this pipe here. A little stuck. I took a couple of taps, but it is off. Standard looks good. The timing marks are fine. like we're going to have a good little motor here. All right, let's get all these lower bolts off. Couple of taps of the mallet got the separating process started. Strategically placed screwdriver can do the rest. Now a lot of people find the seals confusing. I expect to screw this up. So that's a single lip seal facing inward. This is the same diameter single lip seal. So that'll face inward as well. Back here. Single lip seal, copper color facing outward. See a little bit of help. And another single lip seal with the copper facing inward, heavily caked in grease. This is this is pretty straightforward. This, you don't need to overthink this. The same way they go in, same way they come out. All right, clean the mating surfaces up pretty well, I'd say. I got some uh, Kawasaki lube here for the uh, inner seal area. Now, it doesn't look good in the picture here, but in person, it looks pretty clean. Uh, the internet's torn on what to use here, whether you use Cowie Bond, which good luck finding, 1 to 11, which you can order online. A guy sells it. Good luck finding it locally. 
or you can use some uh, moto seal which a lot of people says is cheap inferior stuff but a lot of people also say it works fine so i don't mess around so i got a bottle of all three this is cowie bond 1211 moto seal so i'll be using that for my paint case halves it says to apply it onto the bottom and then install it onto the top of the crankcase there. Okay, gotta slide the old stator over the crank. Alright, these crankcase bolts here, the small ones, pretty large I'd say, but whatever. 16 foot down. Okay, it doesn't say anything about how to torque it, so I'm just going to go a little bit at a time, kind of a star pattern, like you would a head, probably won't hurt anything, can't get in there. Okay, there is a little timing mark for those who aren't aware. Needs to line up right with the crankcase, which you should line up after you get the screw started. All right, here's our new flywheel key. It's the same new one that came out of here. Go by the stator, flywheel, whatever this thing's called. Perfect. Flywheel nut is 115 foot pounds. I'm going to use a torque limiting impact stick for this. It'll be right there. That's it. Looks like somebody was using grease periodically placed along the seal here probably to hold it in during install so I'm going to copy that recommendation Okay, our bed pan is 35 foot pounds. To install. I don't know if I mentioned it previously, but the owner the owner said he couldn't it didn't run, needed all kinds of work, couldn't figure it out. And looking at the fuel line setup now I can see why. Uh, this tube right here is the gas tank vent that runs up through the handlebar. This is the one-way check valve. They have it running up here, presumably went to the carb to do something. So that is incorrect. Now I removed the fuel lines that were in here just strung across doing who knows what. Uh, this filter system, fuel separator, er, water separator, it's on backwards, so it should have been the opposite way. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do is this is a pretty corroded fuel valve so I'm going to remove the uh, lines off it and reinstall into the hull and that will give us you know an entire factory assembly. So as I mentioned earlier I am going to be installing the traditional choke not the primer system. Turns out when you install that primer valve I guess you'd call it into that hole it's pretty it's pretty huge so you need to enlarge the hole on that. 
problem with that is your choke cable now falls, you know, right through. There's no way to attach it anymore. So, I need to replace the front plate, which will give me a smaller hole so that I can install the choke once again. Why don't I like the primer system? Well, I installed one on my uh, my 90 jet ski, which I've had for forever. And, uh, I mean, it worked. It worked good for a year. Second year, it didn't work quite as well. And the third year, it doesn't actually pump anything. It just squirts fuel back at you. So it needs another primer. And this choke is reliable. And it'll last you the lifetime of the ski. So what? 30 to 60 years, the primer lasts, what, one, two if you're lucky? So, not, uh, not something I necessarily want anymore, I don't think. Now that's on, get my new replacement choke installed. I didn't have this plastic nut, but conveniently enough, it was found in the bottom of this jet ski hole. And hardware that I was washing, so left out on that one. Well, we can get the electronics box back in now. Alright, let's get this carburetor off. I don't know if this carburetor has ever been apart or rebuilt or anything. Not that it really matters. It should be done anyway. So that that's hard as a rock. So, this wouldn't have worked. The little clips that hold the gas tank on, they were removed. Do not know why, probably because West Coast gas tank that was in here. But I'm pretty sure they use straps too, so I don't know what uh, what that's about. Well, we might as well get that attached. I went and took the water line off of the other motor. I'm going to put it on this one. Reason being, that has a plastic T on it, which I don't know if I trust. And I don't need this hose fitting. This factory hose. It's good in my book. These, uh, whatever they used here, good old JA pan, it really lasts for a long, long time. I mean, these, these are the, this is the original hose, I'm assuming. It's still nice and soft and pliable and not deteriorating. They're hose technology. Just superior stuff you can go to AutoZone and buy. Okay, I have cleaned out the holes on our mounts, cleaned out the bottom. We have everything attached in there we need. So, for the most part, I think we're ready to put the motor back in. Gonna slide the shims back in. Ah, the ones that came out. Yeah, looks fine. All right, good enough. Gonna put the shims back in. 
So I, uh, last year when I was doing one of these jet skis, I was missing a bunch of hardware, and some dude on eBay was selling, you know, bag or a box of stand-up hardware, and it was like ten bucks. We had two of them. Like, well, twenty bucks for two big old boxes or whatever of hardware. Yeah, I do need it. All right, so I bought it. That was the best purchase I've made. Uh, in this jet ski, I had one correct engine mount bolt, one broken or cut off bolt that kind of fit, and then two in the rear that were missing. The hardware that I bought mainly had three bolts, so no hardware issues. All right, I found this rubber uh, something. So, should be the same size. So I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it right about there. Look at that nice clean cut. Almost like I used a miter saw. Well, it's in there. Probably could have been an inch longer, but I mean, it's on there, from there to there, so I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, gas tank rubber dampeners is next. Let's hope the uh, Cowie Bond holds it down, which we all know it won't. I have installed the gas tank filler neck, which I should have done before I put the gas tank in. But, sometimes you remember, sometimes you forget. And I'm not going to silicone this down just yet, just in case I need to remove it again. One of the best things about these old carburetors is rebuilding them. And going through the joys of scraping the old gaskets off of these plates, it's just such a fun, easy time. Now, I'm not talking about if it's been rebuilt in the past couple of years. I'm talking about original like that one was. It's just a, just a blast. Okay, carburetor, time to meet your new home. Again. Well, I certainly didn't see that coming. I uh, thought I did. That, that's uh, not gonna work. And there ain't no adapting that over either. If there is, I don't know about it. So, pretty easy fix. I have to pull the gas tank, hopefully not the exhaust, but maybe the exhaust pipe. So pull those out, I can then remove the steering cable. When the steering cable's out, I can then remove the throttle cable, as well as a little throttle twist grip. Install a new throttle cable with a new throttle end, and I'll be in business. Two, four hours tops. All right, crisis averted. And you got that working? Show sure. works. So it's, uh, it's off a good start, I'd say. Well, the uh, the engine that somebody gave Dave, that Dave gave me, is finally back into something. Kind of exciting, I'd say.
Let's go get some uh, some fresh gas, throw it in here, and see what happens. All right, we have a couple liters of petrol into our holding tank there. Uh, not much, enough to get us a couple of miles. I uh, better use it on the reserve. Here we are. Lanyard is on. Uh, choke. Now let's pump and see what happens. Well, nothing yet. I was hoping for instant startup, but no fuel in the system, so that makes sense. I sit there and finagle with it. So it's running a little rich. Let's drive down with our needle and see what happens. Now, hopefully, the exhaust in the engine bay is from the open cover, not an exhaust leak. Time to answer the question of if I have an exhaust leak. We'll find out here shortly. Got a fan blowing below the ski. Start it up. See how it looks. Good, garage is full of smoke. <sighs> yep, I would say we have an exhaust leak. I can't tell from where. It's just everywhere up front. Well, this seems fine. No troubles here. The uh, filler net. Pretty loose. It's not really sealing anymore. And uh, I don't even know what's going on there. All right, replacement. Nice and tight. Looks like it'll seal still. And it doesn't have any massive holes on the bottom. So let's get this in.
Yeah, I think it's running a little rich. Let's see if I can fix that. Well, all things considered, I would say runs quite well. Also, check out my custom hitch pin. Pretty sweet. Alright everybody, I will see you next time.